Welcome to Graceville TV. Please join us in worship. Satan fall like lightning as the darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power.
graces, I sing praises, I give you honor, worthy Jesus. Good luck. 
Hey, welcome back to Graceville TV again. Uh, last week, I was just talking about Kingdom Healthy Boundaries. And this week, uh, I want to talk more in detail of how Jesus did it. You know, So we want to get into the Word of the Lord and examples so that this second part is almost like a part where you can use in your church, you can use in your ministry leaders, among your ministry leaders, and actually use it as a Bible study and go through it and actually experience how Jesus did it, right? How he set healthy boundaries. And I was joking you last week, I said how he never want to put 26 hours in a 24-hour day. So here it is, healthy boundaries, setting healthy boundaries. So um, what I'm going to give you this time is an outline, it's an outline form. So i like to share a few key points on how Jesus set healthy boundaries. So I hope this will help you uh, set healthy limits and learn to be joyful givers. Amen. So <clears throat> now I'll start with the physical boundaries Jesus set. Okay. Number one, Jesus accepted his personal limits. Yeah, you say, well, well Jesus is God. Yeah, but he was also man. So he knew that he had physical personal limits. And that's part of his incarnation. He was like a man, okay? So meeting his personal needs, here's what he did. He ate healthy foods. <laughs> Jesus actually ate healthy foods. He got sleep when he needed and even took naps, took time to relax and did a lot of walking, right? I mean, he could have just gone everywhere in a donkey, on top of a donkey, right, or colt. But he chose to walk everywhere. He ate healthy, he ate fish and bread, as far as we know, right? And he took naps. He even took naps when there was a storm going on. And that's how relaxed he was. <laughs> There's a huge storm going on, everybody's panicking, and he's lying down, sleeping away, taking a nap. Now, some of these verses you can find in Matthew 26, 18, 20, Mark 1, 16, 3, 23, 4, 38, Luke chapter 7, 36, John chapter 10, verse 40, and John chapter 12, verse 2, right? We're going to put this on the screen so you can use this to conduct some Bible study and to have discussion session with your ministry leaders, right? So, and, and the one thing I want to tell you is that Jesus received support from his friends, okay? He often sought out the company of his friends. That You find it in Matthew 26, 36 to 38. I'll read this to you. Matthew 26, 36, 38. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. You know, sometimes in our lives, even in ministry, we forget that. We forget that we need the company of our brothers and sisters with us. When we feel sorrowful or overwhelmed with sorrow to a point of death like Jesus. And some of you have been there, right? So you need to seek out uh, your brothers and sisters to accompany you, right? And the other thing we find is Jesus enjoyed solitude. He did enjoy solitude. He enjoyed solitude. Why? He withdrew from the crowds and he would go away on a retreat. He would just go into somewhere or go into, you know, take the boat and go across the, the sea to a different place, right? And to be alone or with friends. He was enjoying the moment, right? These people, this place, this time, and the next. And so he did enjoy his solitude. The third thing we need to know is Jesus set boundaries on time. I told you there's only 24 hours in a day, right? So he would, left, he, he would leave a city and go to another um, because he couldn't be in two places at the same time. And you find that in Mark chapter 1, verse 38. And he knew how to set boundaries that way. 
I mean, everybody was clamoring over him. Everybody wanted him to stay forever. Something, he's a bread maker. Let's just make him make bread and make free fish, multiply fish, you know. But he knew that he had a very definite mission to preach the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. So he continually moved from one place to another, right? And he had an unhurried pace of life. That's the next thing. Jesus was never in a hurry except to go to Jerusalem at that time to embrace his cross, right? And you find that in John chapter 11, verse 6, Mark chapter 10, verse 32. And the one thing that Jesus is very good at is he abandons the outcomes to God. He does that all the time. You know, at times when he was tempted to become paralyzed with fear about the cross, he would let go and let God. Thy will be done, not my will. He would let go and let God. And there's one thing that as a ministry leader, you need to also embrace. You need to learn how to abandon the outcomes to God. Amen? Satan and his demons, along with many people who hated him, were trying to kill him, right? Would he make it to the cross to die for us, to be lifted up publicly, so as it draws people to God? How did he do it? He let go and let God. Amen? He chose not to force things, but to trust the Father's will. To the Father, he abandoned the outcomes of his sufferings, trials to come, as he always did. And you find that in Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 42. Now, one other thing that you can discuss while reading through these verses is this. Jesus said no to inappropriate behavior. There are so many inappropriate behaviors <laughs> demonstrated in the Bible, right? But Jesus would always set a healthy boundary and said no to them. So whenever people inappropriately demand from him, you know, he would draw from the crowds who wanted him for one-on-one -on -one time sometimes, you know. Uh, so he would just, you know, he would just go to his dad, the Father in Heaven, and spend time with the Father in Heaven. You can find that in Luke chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. And the next that we find is that Jesus set healthy boundaries to abuse. Okay? In ministry, sometimes you do get abuse. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay? Uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 28 to 30, um, he had gone back to his hometown. And he was preaching. And then all of a sudden, people say, well, no, this, this guy, you know, he, he's just Jesus. His brothers are so and so and so and so. His sisters are with us. So who is he to tell us anything? You know, so and then they started to want to push him off the cliff. That's real abuse, right? And Jesus just left. He set healthy boundaries. He left. Now, he also set healthy boundaries to entitlement. Sometimes people in ministry, you find that people, you know, some people, they feel that they're entitled to you 24-7, okay? Like, you know, okay, well, you know, it's just so-and-so. It's Peter. I know Peter. You know, I went to school with him. or He's my pastor or whatever. I'm just going to call him at uh, midnight. I just want to ask him something about tomorrow. Well, wait, that can wait till tomorrow, but he wants to call him at midnight. Or sometimes he'll just show up at your house, knock in your house, and say, hey, I want to come in and uh, spend time with you. And it's 11.30 in the, uh, in the evening, 11.30 p.m. So you find that if, with Jesus in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 to 50, uh, his mother and brother showed up while he was preaching, and they tried to use their relationship with him to pull him away from the crowd he was ministering to. And you find that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 to 50. And what did Jesus say at that time? Jesus says, who is, who is my mom? Who are my brothers, my sisters? You who do the will of the Father. My moms, my brothers, and my sisters. That means he actually set healthy boundaries to entitlement. That means, well, I'm, I'm, I'm your mom, so I'm coming in. I don't have a ticket, but I'm coming in. No, right? So 
That didn't happen with Jesus. He set healthy boundaries. He also set healthy boundaries to baiting questions. Sometimes people want to try to bait questions, you know, like the religious leaders especially, you know, the Pharisees, you know, the whole time they're just trying to trap Jesus and to make him look foolish and even to kill him. Um, <clears throat> you find that in Matthew 21, 23, 27, Matthew 22, verse 15 to 22. Um, so many times they will come in, but Jesus will set healthy boundaries. And he answered with incisive questions of his own. He would just, you know, he would just throw a question and that's his way of setting boundary, right? Like, who among you have no sins? <laughs> throw the first stone. So Jesus put healthy boundaries to cynicism as well. He said no to Herod's mocking. You know, you find that in Luke chapter 23, verse 8 to 9. Herod was just harassing him. He's just, he's just you know, he's being cynical to Jesus. He says, show us a sign that you are the son of God. Show us a sign that you're a son of God, right? You know how Jesus set boundaries with this guy named Herod? It's a simple one. No need to answer Herod. <laughs> That was the boundary he said. The Bible says he didn't speak a word. He didn't have to entertain Herod's cynicism. He didn't have to. He set healthy boundaries. <clears throat> now, one other thing that Jesus did with boundaries is that he set boundaries to manipulation. You know, one time he said no to Peter and the disciples who had an inappropriate agenda for Jesus to be a political king or a military warrior rather than a sacrificial lamb. You find that in Matthew 16, 23, right? So Jesus would continuously set healthy boundaries. We, need, we just need to look in the Bible and look in the Word of God and you'll find, like if you look through the lens of boundary, you will see Jesus set healthy boundaries. Why? Why are those healthy, healthy boundaries important because you need to carry out the will of the Father, not your own will. The will of the Father and the will of the Father requires that you're spiritually, emotionally, and physically connected to Him 24-7 eternally. You need to be connected to the Father the whole time. And to do that, you need to set healthy boundaries according to what the Father has required you to set. Easily, whatever is not His will, he ain't doing it. Okay? If his will and his timing, do it. His requirement, do it. His command, do it. If it's not, walk away. <laughs> Just walk away. Set healthy boundaries. And Jesus <clears throat> also set boundaries for prideful people. You know, Matthew chapter 13, verse 57 to 58 of the NIV, we read, And they took offense at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. He didn't heal those who were proud, too proud to trust him. He didn't do it. He couldn't do it because they were too proud anyways, to begin with to even believe in what he was saying and to believe in him. So you find that in Matthew 13, verse 57 to 58, uh, where he set boundaries to people who are prideful, right? These are all the boundaries Jesus set, okay? It sounds crazy and weird, but you know, it's something that he is teaching us, right? It's, it's how he walked on earth and he demonstrated the culture of heaven and the way we are to conduct ourselves as ambassadors of Christ here on earth as it is in heaven. So here's another boundary, exploitation, right? He set boundaries on to exploitation. What happened? Here's an example. In Matthew 21, verse 12 to 17, John 2, verse 12 to 16, you find that he was in a temple and he made a whip. <laughs> he made a whip 
And he cleared out the temple of vendors and money changers who were taking advantage of the poor and turning God's house into a marketplace. Jesus is not against marketplace. He was just setting healthy boundaries to those people that were abusing the poor people and exploiting the poor people and misusing God's temple. Like if you read further, you find that he says the temple is to be a house of prayer, not to be a place where you exploit people, right? So he set healthy boundaries that way too. Now, the other boundaries is, here, here's the thing that happens every day in our life. We read it. You, you find that a lot of people are addicted to things, addiction, right? So Jesus actually took the time to set healthy boundaries and demonstrated that through how he taught the disciples in Matthew 19, verse 16 to 21, where there was actually a young man, young, rich, uh, young ruler, and he couldn't give away his money. He says he wanted to enter the kingdom of heaven, but when Jesus says to part with all those things, he couldn't do it. And then later on, Jesus said, he gave examples of how it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. <laughs> it's like, that's boundaries, you know? And so he set very clear boundaries, even to the misguided. Like a lot of times, he would rebuke his disciples who try to keep the little children away. Like, you know, little children, like he, he comes with his kingdom. So his kingdom is very attractive. People all want to come and hang out with him. Because why? In his kingdom, no one is sick. So everyone that shows up next to him, near to him, they all get healed. Remember last week I was telling you that? And so... Jesus was attractive. He's still attractive today. So people want to enter the kingdom of heaven. They all come. And he even said that, you know, since John, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering assault from people. You know, like people actually want to push and get into the kingdom of heaven. But the thing is, some people have different concept of what the kingdom of heaven is. Like his disciples, they thought that, you know what, Children shouldn't be hanging around Jesus because they couldn't understand a thing. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just wasting his time. We need more of his time. Children's taking his time. So they were like, you know, get rid of these kids. But you know what Jesus said? You know what he said to them? He rebuked them. He scolded them for trying to keep the children away from him. And in fact, he told them that you need to have faith like these little kids. If that's not boundary, I don't know what that is. It's just like, you're trying to get rid of these kids. But in fact, you should have faith like these kids. That's a huge rebuke. That's a, I call it the, a boundary rebuke. <laughs> you know, he set healthy boundaries. And that's found in Matthew 19, verse 13 to 15. Now, don't worry if you're not saying, oh, you know, what is pastor? Where's all these verses? You know what? We're going to put it up at the end of this sermon, and you can see it, and you can use it as a Bible study, right? Jesus also had expectations for people in need. You know, imagine there were two blind guys that called out to him, you know, help us, help us. And he, you know what he did? Like, they were blind, and he, he obviously was walking everywhere, and everybody was getting healed. And they were like, son of David, help, 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 help us. You know what Jesus said to them? He didn't just walk over and just touch them and heal them. He said, what do you want? What do you want? They were blind. What do you want? Right? Why? Why did he do that? Because we have to understand, and I've been preaching to you, that we have the authority in the name of Jesus. We have the dominion. You need to walk out your authority. Right? So he says, what do you want? You have to make a choice. Are you going to use that authority or are you just going to continue to beg and say, nobody's helping me. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm slipping down here. Every time no one, you know, when the pool stirs up, you know, you know, uh, you know the angels can stir up the pool. No one's helping me into the pool. What do you want? 
Now you try that in your Bible study or in, in your teaching. And you actually, when you're counseling people and you say, what are you going to do about it? What do you want? What do you want? And then what are you going to do about it? Exercise the authority, that choice that God has given you, in you. And you see the miracles. That's found in Matthew chapter 20, 29 to 34, right? They needed to ask for what they needed and they needed to trust Him. That's the key. So in another time, Jesus asked an invalid, do you want to get well? Jesus, he's like, I mean, okay, he is not, he's not well. And Jesus actually asked him, do you want to get well? Are you going to make that choice to get well? You're just going to be feeling sorry for yourself for the rest of your life. For 38 years, this invalid at the sheep gate pool hadn't been able to get into that miracle water. I was telling you about that person earlier. He felt helpless, sorry for himself. He expected someone to fix this problem. And Jesus challenged him. He says, do you want to get well? Well, then get up, pick up your mat and walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even in that moment, Jesus was showing us the authority that we have. The guy says, yeah, I want to get well. Okay, get up, pick up your mat and start walking home. That is exercising the authority both for that man and for Jesus to demonstrate to us that we should be exercising the authority, even in ministry. Right? And that's boundary. Setting healthy boundary. It was up to that man to get motivated and take the responsibility for himself. And you find that in John 5, John chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. And then Jesus set the best boundaries ever. Best boundaries. I've read it over and over in the Bible, and this is the best one. Do you believe? <laughs> Do you believe? Well, that's the best kind of boundary, right? Do you believe or not? You know, there was one time a father sought deliverance for his son who was mute and had seizures. And he said to Jesus, well, you know, you have people, you know, like, there was a guy, remember, there was a guy that had the servant that was sick and then he said to Jesus, you know, you don't have to come. You're a man under authority. You just have to speak it. My servant will get healed. And Jesus says, well, I've never seen faith like this in all of Jerusalem. Well, here's, a, here's the opposite, okay? Here's one guy, a father sought deliverance of his son who was mute and had seizures. And he said to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can do anything, Wow. Jesus set a healthy boundary immediately for that man to learn. Jesus put it back to the Father. He says, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. Oh, hallelujah. You're standing before God and say, if you can. He created everything. The father needed to believe that Jesus could cure his son. That's all he needed to do. Mark 9, verse 17 to 27. Read that for yourself. Jesus also offered grace and truth according to the need. Okay, John 8, 1 to 11. That's the one with the woman caught in the adultery. Right? He would offer grace and truth according to the need. To the woman caught in the adultery, he offered grace by saying, neither do I condemn you. That's boundary, you know. And truth. Here's the truth. Here's the truth part. He got grace and then it's truth. The truth part is go and sin no more. Not a boundary. <laughs> Boundaries were given. 
And then you find Jesus also set healthy boundaries at the proud and the self-righteous. There's a lot of proud people when he was walking on earth and they're also self-righteous, you know, especially the people who, uh, who were religious leaders. And we got to check our hearts and don't catch ourselves becoming proud and self-righteous when we're in ministry. Okay? If this is for you, you need to repent. To the Pharisees who tried to condemn this woman, the same woman, the adulterer, to trap Jesus. You know, Jesus offered grace. You know how he did it? He did it by listening. And then he confronted their pride and scapegoating with the truth. Here's, here's the definite boundary right here. God's boundary. He says, let him who is without sin throw the first stone. He taught us examples of how to set healthy boundaries over and over and over again. If only we have the eye open, then the ears open and your heart open, you will see Jesus move with healthy boundaries from the kingdom. Jesus set spiritual boundaries, personal prayer time. It's very important to Jesus. He spent hours praying to the Father. I told you, he spent hours praying to the Father and spent seconds in miracles. But he will spend hours praying to the Father. And he said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. He says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. That's a physical boundary. Close the door, man. Close that door. So it's done in a secret. And the reward will be in the open. You don't go around, you know, sometimes in ministry, well, oh, pray beautiful prayer, like, you know, it's all orchestrated, beautiful, rehearsed, and then people, whoa, you know. It sounds great. But that's not the boundary of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven tells us to go in the quiet, close the door, and pray in the quiet, and then your reward will be in the open. Be honest and direct. Don't pressure people to try to get them to do things. Okay? Here's another boundary he taught us. He says, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Wow. He's giving us his boundaries. Why? To keep us safe. That's why they're called healthy boundaries. That's why I use the word healthy boundaries. Keep us within the safety net of what God has taught us. Our Father who has given us the commands. And this is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Jesus set priorities. You know, he set priorities. He created healthy boundaries for priorities. He said this in Luke chapter 16, 13. He said, no servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Here in ministry, we need to check. Sometimes we are go, 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 big, 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 bigger church, da, 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 more chairs, blah, 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 better equipment, blah, 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 blah. Who are we serving? <laughs> Have we crossed that invisible line? I was telling you about house, you know, property line. We'll cross over. No servant can serve two masters. Boundary. And then he said this in John 5, chapter, uh, John chapter 5, verse 44, verse 44. He says, please God, not people. Please God, not people. He says, how can you believe you, if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? How could you do that? Jesus set healthy boundary mind on obeying God. You know, he did that over and over again. 
Matthew 21, verse 28, 31. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go to work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what the father, what his father wanted? The first they answered. The first they answered. You know, I've given you a lot of verses, but this is actually for you guys to spend time with your church leaders and study them and understand them. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation on how these boundaries are set so that you don't burn out in ministry, that you actually carry out the will of the Father and not your own will. Learn more from Jesus on how to live with good boundaries. When you have time, make that time, go through these verses I've outlined and discover the kingdom culture Jesus lived. Where healthy boundaries let Jesus live a healthy spiritual life, emotional life, and a physical life. The result, here's the result. He fulfilled his task. He fulfilled God's law and the prophecy of the prophets. So until next time, I hope this has helped you. Use this as a, as a tool in your Bible study and discover it together. Don't try to discover it on your own. Discover it together with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So until next time, bless you and bless your family.